The iPhone 15 was released a month ago, and there are a lot of videos on YouTube about the iPhone 15, the 15 Pro, and even the 15 Pro Max. But not many people have tested the iPhone 15 Plus in day-to-day -day use. So today I'll be taking you on a real day in my life with the iPhone 15 Plus while testing the performance, camera, and of course the battery life. Alright, so I usually get up around 9 to 10 a.m. and I'm more of a night owl so I can't really get up any earlier than that. First thing I always do is brush up and do my skincare routine and today I also did my hair. I have pretty dry skin and it's getting cold in Toronto now so I gotta keep up with the hydration. Alright, today is a Saturday but I think it's gonna be a pretty busy day. I wanna get some YouTube work done in the morning and then we're gonna go to a museum to really test out this camera. And we might have a few other things on the schedule but should be fun. So it is. 10 47 a.m right now and of course we fully charged overnight so we still have 100 percent battery life so i'll be bringing you guys and this phone with me throughout the day using it how i usually use my phone and seeing how the battery life holds up without any charging this iphone is actually supposed to have the best battery life out of all the iphone 15s and i guess all the iphones ever made so some pretty high expectations and we'll see how it actually holds up so i have the pink iphone 15 plus here which is probably the most unique colorway out of the new iphones Pink isn't my usual color, but I had to give this one a try. All the other colors this year besides the black are these soft pastel looking colors, so they can be a hit or a miss, but personally I think they look pretty cool. Also I'm coming from the iPhone 13 Pro Max, so in terms of the look and feel of this phone, I definitely appreciate the curved edges that Apple added this year. It looks subtle on camera, but you can really feel a difference when it's in your hand, especially when you're using this phone without a case. You have this nice frosted glass backing, and with the aluminum sides, this colorway is pretty good at not showing any fingerprints. One thing I don't love is that the aluminum sides are a little bit more slippery than the stainless steel sides that I'm used to on my old phone. I also think that the stainless steel just looks a little bit more premium, but that's just a personal preference. Usually in the mornings I make my own coffee and a light breakfast like a yogurt bowl, but today's a weekend so we're headed to a new cafe that opened just 3 minutes away from my apartment. All right, this place is called Columbus Cafe and Co. And supposedly it's a famous French coffee house and this is their first location in Toronto. But not gonna lie, I did my exchange in Paris and I don't remember seeing this anywhere. So let me know if it's actually that famous in France. So today's a Saturday and I don't have actual work work, but I did want to spend some time working on my YouTube and TikTok scripts. I have a bunch of products just sitting at home and I've been busy with work, so I haven't had much time to open them and test them out. And I only got like five hours of sleep last night, so I look kind of drained, but I just need to put in some time to grind out these scripts. Okay, we've been here for over an hour and I've been hotspotting on this iPhone to my Mac and we're still at over 95% battery life, which is crazy. But while I'm procrastinating, let's talk about some of the first impressions of this phone compared to the Pro Max models. So this phone misses the 120Hz refresh rate found on all the iPhone Pro models. And since all my other devices have this higher refresh rate, it was very noticeable, at least initially. While I definitely think that all iPhones should come with a higher refresh rate in 2023, the truth is most average users won't notice a difference in day-to-day -day use, especially on this screen size. Personally, this is one of the bigger deal breakers for me and why I would still choose the Pro Max over this phone, but whether it's a big deal or not depends on what you're used to. This display is also missing the always on display. I never had that on my 13 Pro Max, so it's not a big deal, but I guess it also helps with the battery life this way. But the biggest addition is that Dynamic Island is now available on the regular iPhone 15s and this is new to me because I didn't have a 14 Pro. It lets you interact with the phone in pretty cool ways like changing your song or seeing your timers within other apps. I don't know how useful it really is but it is better than just having a notch. But besides some of those differences, using this phone in day to day doesn't feel very different from using a Pro Max phone. The screen still looks stunning, you get great colors and this year they upped the brightness so it's the same as the Pro models up to 2 2000 nits so it's still very clearly usable in very sunny conditions all right so i had some time to chill at the cafe while waiting for my friends to get ready to meet up for a very late lunch but here are some pictures taken with the default camera settings battery life wise we're at just under 80 percent and it's already been like six hours since i woke up which is pretty crazy this is honestly the best battery life that i've ever seen on an iphone Get a tongue, I 
Feels like daydreaming, no I sit down, man. I love my life, sad I change it, man. I chumbo. The chemistry is I know what that too. I'm the last of them, I don't know I'm getting it. Okay, we finished lunch pretty late, so we had to rush to the art gallery quickly and pretty much only came to see this limited time cause exhibit. And clearly I'm the best at planning these videos because we're at an art gallery today and I'm using the camera a lot so you guys can really get an idea of how good the cameras are in different day-to-day -day scenarios. The iPhone 15 has a 48 megapixel camera sensor which takes amazing photos and almost on par with the pro line of iPhones this year. You're just missing out on a few bells and whistles like the macro lens for close-ups and the new 5x telephoto lens. My favorite change by far is Apple adding the 2 times zoom feature to the regular iPhone 15s despite not having that third telephoto lens. The quality is actually surprisingly good because it's not just a digital zoom. I think this is one of the big reasons a lot of people chose the pro iPhones before, but now that a telephoto lens is available here, they might not need one. Oh, and check out some of these pictures. After the art gallery, the phone was still sitting at 60%. And here's a look at the front facing camera and some outdoor lighting, but it was getting a bit dark, so the quality isn't the best here. I then had some downtime to check on social media, reply to your YouTube comments, and scroll through TikTok. I also decided it would be a good time to put the A16 Bionic chip's performance to the test. So this chip is the same one as on last year's iPhone 14 Pro, so it's obviously very powerful and more efficient. On paper, this chip is a bit slower than similarly priced Android phones, but in actual day-to-day -day use, there's really no difference that you can notice. I loaded up some games from Apple Arcade, and I gotta say, in terms of performance while gaming, you don't really notice the difference in refresh rate. The same goes for watching videos on this phone, everything on Netflix looks really sharp with this screen and you can hardly notice the lower refresh rate. I honestly notice it more when I'm just swiping in between apps or scrolling through a news article. I also didn't game for too long but I did notice that there wasn't any overheating on this phone whereas on the Pro Max phones they do get a little hot after a while of use. Okay last stop for the night we're headed out to a board game cafe called Snakes and Lattes. It's around 9.50pm and the battery is still sitting at a comfortable 40%. And this is what the rear camera looks like in nighttime conditions. You lose out on a lot of the clarity, but it's definitely still usable. Aaron, Aaron, what? Aaron, <laughs> is this true? Damn, I'm a long way home at a split road. Gotta make a choice to a sober up. Am I trying to keep it going to be continued, or am I trying to lose good and I came home for now? I don't think I want to leave, gotta go free, gotta realize this is what I need. Don't got the time to be counting sheep. It's too late, I'm in too deep. Okay, so I got home around 1am and the phone still has 29% battery after that extremely long day of use. I will say that screen time wise, I only clocked around 7 hours of screen on usage. I don't know if that's a lot or not, but this phone definitely preserves battery life very well when it isn't being actively used, since it lasted well past my 15 hour day without needing to charge. And speaking of charging, the addition of USB-C on all iPhone 15s makes it a lot easier to use one cable to charge everything. Overall though, I can easily recommend this phone to the average user and not have them feel like they aren't getting the top of the line iPhone experience. You are getting the full iPhone experience here. Obviously there are some trade-offs given that this isn't the pro model, but Apple's done a really good job this year of including most of the things that average users care about. Having this stunning looking iPhone with all of these new features added, plus an absolute tank of a battery, makes it a solid recommendation for everyone in my opinion. But let me know if you have any questions in the comments down below, and thanks again for watching until the end. I'll see you guys soon.